Hey there fellow entrepreneurs, today we're here to talk about a critical aspect of running a successful staffing agency, determining your minimum margin. Your minimum margin is the minimum profit percentage that you should aim for on each contract or each placement. It's the foundation of a financially sustainable business model. Throughout this video, we'll walk through the various fees that you'll encounter in the staffing industry and share strategies on how to set reasonable rates. It's crucial to strike the right balance between profitability and competitiveness. You don't want to price yourself out of a market and miss out on valuable contracts. Let's dive in and ensure your staffing agency thrives in the competitive landscape that we're in today. Get ready for actionable strategies and industry insight that will transform your business. At Passive Workforce, we're dedicated to empowering entrepreneurs just like you. We provide expert guidance on starting, growing, and even selling your companies. Today's insight on minimum margins and rate setting are just a taste of what you could gain from our comprehensive mentoring program. So stay tuned till the end and we'll share how you can become a member of our exclusive group mentoring program for only $99 a month. Trust us, the value you'll receive is beyond measure. In order to run a successful staffing agency, it's crucial to have a grasp on the several key factors that impact your profitability and your ability to compete. To be clear, there are three important considerations to help you navigate these factors and make informed decisions. Profit margin, the true cost of employment, and understanding pricing from the perspective of the facility that you're staffing in. Profit margin is the foundation of a financially sustainable business model. Setting a margin too low can lead to financial instability and hinder your growth as an agency. Let's talk about the factors that influence profit margin, such as the overhead costs of your business, competition, and market demand. By understanding industry standards and conducting a thorough analysis of your cost and desired profit goals, you'll be able to determine a good rate that strikes the right balance between your price and being profitable. My general rule of thumb when it comes to pricing your rates is to set a 1.5 time profit margin. What I mean by that is that if you've done market research and you know that nurses are expecting $50 an hour, and I'm just using $50 an hour as an example, but they're expecting $50 an hour in wages, you should be charging 1.5 times that base rate as your bill rate. And that's going to give you a safe cushion to be profitable and be able to provide competitive pay rates. Now, the way that you're gonna go about researching your market pay rate is just talk to people who are working in the areas that you plan on staffing in. So if you're looking to staff nurses in ICU, hospital setting, whether it's per diem, travel, et cetera, you should be doing market research to collect information to see what are the true seller expectations for people who are working with agencies in the sort of setting that you plan on placing them in. Once you have that average number and you know what people are willing to accept, Mark that up by 1.5 times, and that's going to be a safe number to ensure that you're gonna make enough money after all of the hidden cost. You also wanna align yourself that way because it starts to get way too expensive for the facilities if you go above that. Now, what I see a lot of people do as a rookie mistake is that they think, all right, if nurses are asking for $50 an hour, I'll mark that up by 10 bucks and I'll be making $10 an hour per nurse. On a full-time basis, that's still a $20,000 a year margin is what they're thinking. But in reality, since they haven't ran a business before, they don't know about all of the other costs that are associated with that. And if you do something like this and you only mark up by, let's just say 1.3, 1.3 is probably the lowest that you could actually do in order to even squeak out a profit. I really don't recommend going down to 1.3. That, that is the floor. If you go below 1.3, you're almost guaranteeing that you're working for the facility and not really working for your business. Now, when you look at the overall margin in this industry, most businesses that are operating in the healthcare staffing space are going to net out, this is true net profit, around 20 to 30% take home. And that's going to obviously depend on how optimized their business is, what sort of rates they're charging. But the industry standard is roughly between 20 and 30%. If you look at the financials of publicly traded companies that are in this space, or you look at some of the private companies that are for sale, you'll see that if you look at the gross revenue and their take home and reported net income and what they're reporting in their sales information, or even from personal experience, you're gonna end up around that number. 30% is kind of healthy. 20% would be typical considering how most businesses are operating, what their overhead expenses are, et cetera. So again, just to recap, 1.5 is the safe number. 
1.3 is the floor. To accurately determine your pricing structure, it's essential to have a comprehensive understanding of the true cost of employment. Let's break down the direct costs including wages, benefits, and payroll taxes. The first time that I ever ran a payroll, it was a surprise to me because I didn't know that as an employer, you also have to pay into the tax pool. Those taxes, according to all businesses, are Medicare, are all the federal contributions, so Medicare, Social Security, federal unemployment tax. And then there are taxes on the state level, which include state unemployment tax, and sometimes down to the city level or even the county level. It gets kind of crazy when it comes to what you're expected to pay on employees. And that's something that comes as a surprise to new entrepreneurs. It definitely was a surprise to me. I remember running our first payroll, doing the calculations, expecting what our costs were going to be to only have ADP let us know that we owed more money. Now, you could estimate that those costs are going to be between 14 and about 20% of their wages because some of them are wage dependent, some of them are continuous throughout how much money they earn. So that's going to vary slightly, but to play it super safe, you might as well kind of mark off about 20% as additional cost to employ. Another cost that's going to be associated with wages is gonna be your workers' compensation. If you're employing people, most states require mandatory workers' compensation. And workers' compensation rates for this industry can range from between as low as 2%, depending on the type of workers that you're placing and what setting they're in, to as high as 17%. Again, that's specific to the state, specific to their risk profile. So if you're paying about 20% in tax mandates, and you're going to be paying roughly about 4%, just to be average, 4% in workers' comp, that's already either 14 to 24% above your cost to just employ that's being paid out in the mandatories. And that doesn't even include the indirect cost. So when you're working out your rates, that's why I said the 1.5 rule is it's pretty good, but you need to do that market research to say, hey, well, let's take a look. If I was paying $50 an hour and I had additional cost of 20%, just for easy math again, then my true cost to directly pay one of these workers is 20% above $50 an hour, which is $60. So if you were billing $60 already, you're at break even. And that's not even factoring in the cost of your capital, your telephones, et cetera, right? So that's why it's important to know these things. When you're doing your market research and you're starting to apply your markups and, and really to get a sense of what your margin is going to be, you should be using tools that allow you to forecast your true cost. For our members that are in our turnkey program or in a premium program, we provide them with a spreadsheet that's a rate calculation tool. And it works kind of two-sided. You put in their base rate all the way in the left, and then you put in your state mandates. So federal's already calculated in, but all the state mandates should be added in as well. Your cost for capital should be added there as well if you're using a line of credit or some sort of factor arrangement. And then you have your proposed billing rate in the far right column. And that spreadsheet would automatically spit out how profitable you're going to be, what is gonna be your margin, how much you're gonna be making per an hour, how much are you gonna make on a 40 hour work week, how much are you going to make if you employ this person for a year. And from there, you could determine whether or not those numbers are viable to you. I've seen all kinds of rinky th things being taught on the internet where it's just kind of randomly <laughs> associating cost. These are predictable costs that will be easy for you to determine and it'll allow you to accurately get down to the penny so that if you're in a real live negotiation, you can plug them into your spreadsheet and know that, hey, if you take below $72 an hour, it starts to get you into murky territory. And at least you could, you could cut the line there. Another thing that's really cool about that spreadsheet is that you can negotiate better markets for yourself based upon the base rate that you pay. Some people think that they have to charge the lowest bill rate and pay the most. You know what ends up happening? You get squeezed by doing that. Once you have your billing rate set with the contract that you have, it's also your responsibility to negotiate with the nurse. If you have a low point, which is maybe the lowest acceptable rate, you might wanna offer that first, see how that negotiation goes. They may counter you at below your average rate. And let's just say that, again, using the $50 example, you're offering $44 to start. Market conditions say 50 is okay, but people accept the 44. That's a $6 an hour spread 
that you've added for yourself just by negotiating with the worker. At the same time, the worker may turn around and say, the least that I'll work for is 53. You could plug that into the spreadsheet, see exactly how that's gonna affect your bottom line. If you're billing $75 an hour and you're paying $53 out, you still will make money. Again, the 1.5 rule really gives you some leeway to, to maintain profitability while being sensible when it comes to the facility. While on the topic of direct costs, let's uncover the hidden costs such as recruitment expenses, background checks, and administrative costs. By factoring in both direct and indirect costs associated with hiring and retaining employees, you'll have a clearer picture of the true expenses involved. Understanding these costs will help you set competitive rates that cover your expenses and ensure you make some money. Now there's some indirect costs that you can control, such as your rent, um, such as your number of staff, your ad spend. Those are things that you can control. The things that you can't control are your mandatory insurance cost. So workers comp, like I said, I usually bundle that into the cost of employment, but your spreadsheet or whatever tool you're using may kind of factor that apart. I associate that with employment because it's directly related to payroll. So it's better to bundle that together. But you also have general liability insurance. You have professional insurance. You have the cost to host your website. All of these soft costs are going to essentially affect your overall margin. So you're gonna to need to make sure that you're kind of factoring in your total personnel cost, your total recruitment cost, all other expenses that are not related to your cost of goods and services, direct cost of goods and services. You should try to get a average dollar amount per an hour for that. Here's what I mean. Let's just say that your business had a million dollars of expenses. And out of that million dollars, 900,000 was wages and all the costs associated with wages. And the remaining 100,000 were all your overhead costs. And to make that $1 million, you provided um, 10,000 hours of service, okay? If you provided 10,000 hours of service, that means that you're spending about $10 an hour, actually directly $10 an hour for every hour of service that you provided. Because the rest of that, Went that other $90 per an hour went to the workers and the workers' costs, and the other 10 was to run your business. That could be your admin staff wages, your ad costs, everything else. You're gonna wanna look at that on an annual basis. Look at the last year and, and see, okay, based on last year's performance, how much did we spend per an hour for all our service? Once you know that number, you could also start to forecast how you're gonna perform in the following year. If you were to provide 15,000 hours of services with the same overhead, now your costs are even lower, right? You've reduced your overhead costs by 50%, and now that's a little bit lower. It's closer to $5 an hour or whatever the math equals. You're gonna to wanna to do those assessments regularly so you know what your true take home is going to be, and you could also factor that into your calculations to know that overall, if X amount of dollars is, no matter if it's a CNA or if it's a physician that you're staffing, X amount of dollars per an hour or for every hour serviced, we need this much staff, we need this much support for our operations, this is how much we're budgeting per an hour of service so that we could run our business. So the tip here is definitely know what your cost of goods and services are. The acronym for that is COGS, Costs of Goods and Services. That's the that's a true cost to generate your revenue. And then you have all your other overhead expenses. If you work with a good accounting team or if you even worked with our partners, healthcare back offices, we would do these analysis with you every single month to really break down where you're at, make sure that you have the key performance indicators, the key metrics for you to be making decisions and know where you stand. You don't wanna be one of those companies who's just flying by the seam of your pants and just figuring it out at the end of the year that you didn't make as much money as you thought. Been there, I know what that's like. I don't want you to repeat the same mistakes. Negotiating fair and profitable rates requires that you understand pricing from the perspective of the facility or the provider that you're staffing with. You have to align pricing with their perceived value and benefits that you can provide them. You can negotiate rates that are fair, profitable, and competitive. One thing that you need to remember are all the facilities that you're staffing in, they have a budget that they need to stay within. And this is something that a lot of people miss. Just because they're short-staffed doesn't mean that they could just blow money and still 
turn a profit. Most of the healthcare facilities, nursing homes, physician practices are for profit and they have an annual budget. And within that annual budget, they have their employment cost. And they assume some overtime, potentially some agency use, and they have a general idea of how much they need to spend on their workforce to maintain their business and to be profitable. If your rates are too high, you're going to be the line item that they wanna reduce because they're gonna be comparing their cost of staff, particularly agency staff, versus their cost of internal staff. And if there's too much of a delta, too much of a difference, they're going to cut the agency out because that's going to make them more profitable, especially if they're able to boost their, their if they're able to reallocate the money that they're spending on agencies to their direct recruitment costs. And if it's less money, absolutely, they're gonna cut the agencies and spend more money on their recruitment efforts to bring down their overall salary expenses. If you don't understand that, you're gonna come in too high and you're not gonna be able to negotiate. So one of the things that I always advise and something that I do is when talking to the financial people, the people who really understand the, the financial side of the business, I try to get them to talk to me about what is their true cost to employ. Because usually the people that you're negotiating with, they don't know that because they're their employees. They, they just know how much they get paid per hour. They don't know how much the company's investing in paid time off. They don't know how much are the union cost. They don't know how much the overhead is. They have no idea what the true budget is for them as the employee. They just know their rate. So if you have a director of nursing who's getting paid $75 an hour or $150,000 a year, and she's running a skilled nursing facility, and she sees the bill rate is also $75, she's gonna be like, what? They're charging as much as I get paid for a floor nurse? No way, that's too much. And she doesn't even know that the true budget for a floor nurse in her building that might be getting paid $40 an hour is $75 an hour when it's all packaged together. So it may actually cost them $150,000 a year to hold, employ, and retain an RN. So if your agency bill rate is the same as their true cost to employ someone regular time, it's a win. It's a win for everybody. You're bringing them staff at their same budgeted cost. And if there's enough meat on the bones for you to turn a profit, perfect. Another thing that might be happening is that your bill rate might be equal to the overtime rate of a regular employee. Now, overtime is always an expense that employers don't want, but there is going to be a certain amount of overtime kind of built in. If you come in at that overtime cost, the conversation changes a little bit. The conversation then becomes, we understand that you're mandating staff and that's going to burn out your staff and potentially cause you to lose even more staff, increasing the total amount of overtime. You could use our agency as respite, as bridges for overtime. It's costing you the same amount, but at least you're not burning out your staff. And as we get closer to meeting your objectives, then we could taper off on the agency side and potentially even work with you on a direct hire basis. You need to understand that this is how the CFOs are thinking, the CEOs are thinking, the board is thinking. They're always looking at the spreadsheets and trying to see how can they be more profitable? Where are they out of line for their budget? And how can they rein it back in? By coming in and negotiating from that perspective, they're gonna understand that you are competent and that you are aligned with them being profitable and meeting the objectives. Once your rates are out of line with their budgets, it's a losing negotiation, right? Only desperation will get you business. And as soon as that desperation eases off, you're gonna be out of the building. And that's not what you want. You want a long-standing relationship that is beneficial to you as the agency and beneficial to them as a facility because they're ultimately looking to turn a profit and not be in the red. Now that you understand profit margin and the true cost of employment, as well as pricing from the perspective of the facilities, you're equipped to set reasonable rates that ensure profitability without pricing yourself completely out of the market. For further guidance and support, we invite you to join our exclusive group mentoring program at Passive Workforce. Our program offers comprehensive guidance 
on starting, growing, and selling your staffing agency, helping you achieve whatever your long-term success goals are. To get an idea on how these sessions are structured, go to our website and watch our free webinar where we do a deep dive on rate calculations and answer the questions for those who are in attendance. Links for that can be found down below and I have them pinned. You can also find the link for the group mentoring sessions as well. I hope you found this informative. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.